my streaming service, Dark and Twisted TV, to watch my exclusive animated horror series, My Girlfriend Wants to Kill Me, and more. Others have joined. So what are you waiting for? Join today. Link in the description. Now on to the show. My brother Donnie and I went into business together cleaning restaurants during the graveyard shift. We both enjoyed it a lot because things were quiet during that time of night and we could work at our own pace. Well, on this particular night, our job was to clean KFC. So around 2 a.m., we began working. My job was to buffer the floor while Donnie's job was to wash down the walls. I was just about to start my buffering when I heard a knock on the window. And when I looked up, there was a man standing there in the rain, mumbling something. Since the glass was between the both of us, I told him I could not understand what he was saying, but after reading his lips, I could understand that he was asking for me to open the door. <laughs> of course, I was not just going to open the door for some random stranger. So I yelled that KFC was closed and that we only worked there to clean and that maybe he should just come back in the morning during business hours. Then he just stood there looking at me with a strange look in his eyes. So I just walked away and began buffering the floor while Donnie was still in the back cleaning the walls. Then Donnie yelled out and said that he was going outside for a cigarette break, but I yelled to him not to go out there because there was a questionable looking man trying to get in, but I was too late. I had heard him open the door, so I ran back there only to find the man with Donnie in a chokehold as he held a gun to his head firmly. So I asked him what he wanted from us. He said that they were after him. So I asked who's they? And what he said next was confirmation that this man was off his rocker like an old lady knocked off her rocking chair. He said that there were spirits after him, vicious spirits as in ghosts. <laughs> this man was obviously not playing with the full deck as he apparently had a leak in his attic, if you know what I mean. So once again, I asked him what did he want from us. He said that he needed us to drive him out of town and that we had no other choice or he was going to kill us both, cut our bodies into small chunks and place us in the deep fryer and sell us as KFC's new chicken nuggets or human nuggets. This man's mind was fucked, so we agreed to get him out of town, but I told him that before we left, I needed to use the bathroom, so he told me to hurry up as he stood by the door. So I went into the bathroom and had plans on calling the police, but then noticed my cell phone had been left in our work van. At first, I thought I was shit out of luck, but then I noticed a small opening in the ceiling above the toilet. So I stood on the toilet, raised myself up, and pushed my way through to the outside. I was able to get into the van and call the cops and saved my brother's life. Come to find out, 
the man was mentally insane and had escaped from a van that was transporting mental patients from one mental hospital to the other. He had killed the driver and ended up at KFC. This was the scariest and most disturbing horror that I ever experienced. Usually, I never eat inside of restaurants due to all of the craziness that goes on in them at times. I mean, look at Popeye's chicken when people are fighting over the new chicken nuggets and sandwiches. And to be honest, KFC is no exception when it comes to crazy shit. And after watching this story, you will see what I mean. So I was on my lunch break and I had just walked into KFC, then walked up to the counter to order my food. The cashier was very nice and polite and asked to take my order. I told her that uh, I would take a chicken sandwich, corn on the cob, and a large Pepsi. So she smiled at me, took my money, and placed my order as I waited. Then, out of the corner of my eyes, I noticed a guy peeking through the food order window, and he was looking straight at me and giving me the evil eye. Then he signaled the cashier to come back to the kitchen. Barely one minute had passed when I heard arguing coming from the kitchen, followed by sobbing. The cashier returned to the front with tears streaming down her face, and she looked to be on the verge of a breakdown. I asked her if she was okay, but she just smiled and went back to work. It was an awkward wait, so I tried to strike up a conversation and asked her how long she had been working there. She told me that her and her boyfriend, Ted, had worked there for the past two years. Immediately, I got the feeling that this guy in the back, the one who was giving me the evil eye, who she was arguing with, was the boyfriend that she was referring to. So I just came out and asked her if that was her boyfriend in the back, and she said yes. Then I heard him yell out to her once again. Betty, come back here, he yelled. She asked me to excuse her while she walked to the back once again. Then I heard him yelling at her, degrading her with the most offensive profanity that I had ever heard. And when she walked back up to the front, I asked her if she was sure everything was okay. She was hesitant at first, but then said, Yes, uh, I'm okay. Then gave me my food as she forced her mouth to crack a smile. I felt sorry for the girl, so I told her that she should not put up with that shit. But then, once again, he yelled out for her to come to the back. She then began to walk toward the back, and I was just about to sit down when I heard a crash coming from the back. I yelled out if she was okay, but there was no answer, only crying. Then a few seconds later, out walked her boyfriend with the most evil and disturbing look on his face. He looked as if he wanted to kill me out of jealousy. Yo, you banging my girl? He asked. Then he started walking toward me. I told him to leave her alone and that he had no business abusing her like that. 
But that's when he pulled out his gun and he pointed it in my direction as he began grinding his teeth. I told him to put the gun down and just to take it easy, but he began yelling and, and accusing me of messing around with his girlfriend as his finger began to slowly squeeze the trigger. Then out of nowhere, his girlfriend, the cashier, had came up behind him and poured hot chicken grease on the top of his head as his eyes rolled back and he hit the floor. He was dead. The grease had cooked through his scalp, exposing his brains as a huge puddle of blood poured out of the back of his head. Betty, his girlfriend, was arrested, but after I told the cops about his abuse and she confirmed it as well, all charges were dropped against her. From that day forward, I only placed orders through drive through windows. My girlfriend, Samantha, and I had came up with a brilliant idea to start our own business and we decided to go into the chicken business as in opening our own chicken chain of restaurants and we figured the best way to get hands-on experience was for the both of us to get jobs working at KFC. So on Monday, we began our new jobs working late nights. We had just clocked in and were ready to start working when in walked a man dressed in a Colonel Sanders mask. We didn't know if it was just a joke or something or if we were actually being robbed. Well, guess what? We were being robbed. We both immediately began removing the cash from the cash register, but told him that we did not have the combination to the safe. By the way, they always train employees to say that just in case we're robbed, even if we do have the combination. Anyways, after giving the man all of the money, he told us that he was not there for the cash. He had no interest in the money at all. In fact, he then went on to say that he was robbing us for the secret recipe. Then out of nowhere, I began to laugh hysterically. I mean, who robs a restaurant for its secret recipe? This guy was hilarious, or so I thought, until he pulled out his gun and pointed it directly toward us. Me being the man and all, I jumped in front of my wife and begged the man not to harm her. But he just told me to shut my smelly mouth and just give him the recipe for the mouth-watering crispy chicken that he loved so much. But we told him that we did not have the secret recipe. Then he told us on the count of three he was going to pull the trigger. My wife and I just looked at each other, knowing that this could be the final moments together on Earth. So like any other normal person, we began to pray. Then the man began his countdown of death. One, two, and before he could get to three, my wife came up with a brilliant plan. She told him that she had the secret recipe in the back and needed to go get it. So he told her to go ahead, but if she got any brilliant ideas, he was going to blow my freaking brains out. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am allergic to bullets and I prefer having my brains remain in my head rather 
than being splattered all over a wall. Anyways, she said she would be back as he kept aim at my head. Honestly, I had no idea what she had planned, but my wife was clever, so I trusted her. Two minutes later, she came back with a white envelope and handed it to the man and told him that it was the secret recipe. When he opened it, it was a small piece of paper with some ingredients written in my wife's handwriting. This ain't no fucking recipe, he said. Then he aimed the gun at my wife. Then, all of a sudden, we heard a gunshot as he fell to the floor with a bullet hole in his back. A bullet that was fired from an undercover cop who just so happened to be walking by. Then out of nowhere, three other people ran into the restaurant and one was videotaping. And the most terrifying part was when I removed the man's mask, it just so happened to be my brother, Charlie. He was only playing a practical joke for his new YouTube prank channel, and the three people were his crew. After being rushed to the hospital, the good news was Charlie was going to be okay, but would need rehab to walk again. This goes to show you that sometimes prank channels can take their pranks a little too far, ending in the worst way imaginable.